Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Dr. Bai Lee Court at the Event Center on the campus of Binghamton University for today's Subway Restaurant Pack the House Showdown between the Yale University Bulldogs and your Binghamton University Bearcats. At this time, we ask you to kindly please rise and remove your hats. Join our players and coaches as we honor America and all of the brave men and women serving our country with the playing of our national anthem. Presenting the colors in center court this afternoon are members of the Binghamton University kick line and Baxter. And now to perform our national anthem, the BU Pup Band, the Screaming Green. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet this afternoon's starting lineups. First, for the visiting Bulldogs of Yale. <coughs> At guard, a six foot one inch sophomore, number 12, Reggie Parker. At forward, a six foot two inch senior, number 12, Jen Berkowitz. At guard, a five foot nine inch senior, number 14, Marianne Santucci. At guard, a five foot eight inch sophomore, number 21, Roxy Merriman. And at forward, a five foot ten inch freshman, number 24, Helen Margaret Andrews. For the Bulldogs, the volunteer assistant coaches, Jacinda Dunbar, the assistant coaches, Roman Owen and Melissa D'Amico. And the head coach of the Yale University Bulldogs is Allison Huth. from the event center in Vestal, New York. Welcome to ESPN's presentation of women's college basketball. Today, the Binghamton Bearcats host the Yale Bulldogs. Alongside the one and only Chelsea Lascalzo, I'm Tim Hyman. We're thrilled you made us part of your Saturday afternoon. Chelsea, it's a story of two teams. One of these teams is coming back from a long time away. The other is starting a pretty long stretch on the road. Yeah, the Binghamton Bearcats returning from a trip out to Las Vegas, Utah, Alaska, two and two on the road in their last four games. So coming back to defend the home court. And on the flip side, you have the Yale Bulldogs playing nine of their next 11 games on the road. And talking with Coach Allison Guth, it's really going to be a test for them. And, you know, it might be a little, a nice change of scenery for them. We're going to see how they do on the road. This is the first time that Yale has traveled to take on the Bearcats here in the Southern Tier. Yale is three and three. The Bearcats are four and three. And we take a look at the keys to today's matchup, just the third in all time between these two squads. Yeah, you know, for Yale, they really want to take advantage of second chance points here. Their leading scorer, Tamara Simpson, is out today. So they're going to have to take advantage of every single chance that they get. And they want to control the pace from the start on Binghamton's home court. On the flip side, Binghamton, they really want to play consistently, put four periods together here, which they've struggled to do in a couple of exhibitions this season. 
defending as a team, that is when they've been most successful. So we'll see if they can do that today. Yeah, the two big names when you think of Yale women's basketball would be Tamara Simpson, and the other would be Jen Berkowitz, who will go toe to toe with Alyssa James. Yeah, with Tamara Simpson out, you know, a lot of that heat falls on Jen Berkowitz, and she's been having a tremendous season, uh, you know, up there and scoring with Simpson. And to see the matchup with Alyssa James today, who's big in the post, I think it's going to be an exciting day of post play. Yeah, so Simpson again is out due to a family commitment. 17 points per game left off the table for the Yale Bulldogs. Take a look at the starters for the Yale Bulldogs with Simpson out. That slides a new name in. Marianne Santucci will make just her third start of the season. Yeah, you know, when you have a leading scorer and they're not playing, everyone really needs to step up. So we'll see each of these five players are going to need to contribute. A lot of the focus, I think, will be on Berkowitz as it has been inside, but we'll see if they can get some inside out play going. Not many big surprises from Binghamton. Rebecca Carmody back in the starting five for the Bearcats. She makes her sixth start and again Binghamton relying on those big four up front. Yeah, you know, when their stars are, are, are scoring and playing well, defending as a team, Binghamton succeeds. So Kai Moon, I mean, she's really been playing well these last few games and they'll see if she can continue. Yale had a huge win on the road. They went to TCO and beat TCU, but then dropped their last two for Binghamton, as we mentioned, coming back from that lengthy road trip where they racked up literally thousands of miles. They're coming off a loss, though, a bit closer to home. They lost to Bucknell last week. Yeah, so both these teams coming off of losses, and, you know, it's still early in the season. This is not this is non-conference play, but both teams looking to get a win, get on track, you know, getting ready for that conference play. Binghamton wears white, Yale sports blue. We're off and rolling. Yale has the first possession of today's game. We come to you from Dr. Biley Court at the event center, home of Binghamton Bearcats. They are 2-0 oh on this floor this season. Controlled on the win, Jen Berkowitz, owner of just about 16 points per game. They go inside to Roxy Barriman, and Barriman puts Yale on the board. You know, Barriman playing increased minutes this season. You know, last year had some injury, and she's really taken on that role and expanded. Yale, Stones, Watkins. Here comes Andrews, and Watkins cleans the glass. Jeffrey Smith will run the show today out of our trio of officials. He's joined by Mark Resch and Rob McDowell. Second possession for Binghamton. Carmody finds James against three, and she will go to the free throw line. You see Carmody, you talk about shot selection on the offensive side, and she got the ball at the top of the key, had an open shot, dismissed it, drove to the rim, drew three defenders, and was able to dish for the foul. And for Rebecca Carmody, that unselfish play coming on the heels of a terrific stretch. In her last four games, Carmody has poured in 34 points. You know, and for Rebecca Carmody, it's really the hustle plays that help getting her going. I mean, we see her, she's on the floor, she's grabbing boards, she's assisting, she's running the floor. So when she's so active like that and it draws the attention, it's able to get other people going as well. James's difficulty at the free throw lines continue. Now 10 of 18 this season. Not coming on the heels, the foul from Barriman. Bulldogs collect the offensive rebound. Santucci making her third start. Swung to Andrews against Watkins. Berkowitz, mid-range, won't go. Rebound Watkins. Amani Watkins coming off a rough shooting night against Bucknell on Wednesday. She was 6 of 23. Binghamton lost 64-59. Carmody against Gorman. Again feeds James. James misses again from the free throw line. This will stay with Binghamton. Allison Guth is in her third season running the show for the Yale Bulldogs. Coming off a stellar season, they ranked up 15 wins last year, the most for the Bulldogs since 2011-2012. Her Bulldogs have entered this game with a 3-3 three three record, and they come up with a steal. That's Barriman against Moon, and it's a 4 nothing Yale lead. You see Yale extending their defense here after the made basket. Seen them do that a couple times this season in different possessions, you know, and we talked with coach Allison Guth, extending the defense up the floor and it's helped them on the offensive end. 
Offensive foul against Cena. This is Linda Simino's fourth season running Binghamton Bearcats women's basketball program. Two years ago, America's Coach of the Year. It's a 4 0 Yale lead. 7.35 left in the first quarter. Three ball from Barriman. Offensive rebound, Andrews, and she's fouled on the putback. And that's where you talk about Yale taking advantage of second chances here. I mean, Alyssa James on the bench right now, Kaylee Wasco fulfilling those shoes and having some trouble rebounding. And Alyssa James, you know, that is what she does. She rebounds, she changes, you know, shots inside the key. And with her out, Yale able to take advantage of some second chances. Okay, put me into Linda Simino's shoes. Why is James out this early? Couple of possessions here, probably shot selection, uh, trying to maybe settle her down a little bit. I'm sure we'll see her back shortly. Five point Yale lead. Watkins tries to make something happen. And this will be a Yale or Binghamton basketball. Mark Resch asking for some help, and he gets it. Binghamton comes into this game shooting 38% from the floor. That's sixth best in America East. They're looking for their first bucket. Harmony can't get that first bucket, and the foul on the rebound attempt goes against Kaylee Wasco. Yeah, good take by Carmody. She's so good off of that elbow. You know, it's kind of her signature, kind of go to the basket. She'll catch, rip through, and attack. Binghamton now 0 for 4 from the floor in the first three minutes. Andrews from the corner. Another offensive rebound. This one ripped down by Barriman. Bulldogs have just about an even rebound margin. Less than one per game separates them from their opponents. The Bearcats actually have a positive rebound margin this season. Right around one and a half per game. That's Santucci from deep. That's way off, and this will be Binghamton basketball. A good defensive possession there by Binghamton, forcing a long three. They were really moving in that zone and kind of kept Berkowitz to the outside there. After a spell on the bench, Melissa James returns to the floor. Chelsea, when a team faces another team whose star, one of their stars, is out, how much does that change in the opening quarter when you're not playing towards the scouting report you were prepared for? You know, I think a lot of teams, you know, you're, you're looking at your scouting report, you're, you're focusing on player personnel, but you're also focusing a lot on what you need to do. So when the opposing, you know, leading scorer might be out, it doesn't necessarily change your game plan, it just changes a little bit of the personnel. James comes off the bench, picks up her first bucket, but Berkowitz answers back. Berkowitz hit the bucket, and the play was immediately blown dead. And the officials halted play, but it looks like this bucket will still count. But a good sign for the Bearcats. James comes right back, her first shot from that bench, a made bucket. Yeah, sometimes, you know, at the beginning of the game, you just need to settle the players in a little bit, especially a game, I mean, you're coming in versus Yale. It's a big game. Um, you know, non-conference play, you try not to put too much emphasis on it, but it does matter at the end of the day when you're looking at strength of schedule and preparing for conference play. Bolin from the elbow. And it's off a bulldog. We'll set the Bearcats up. It's the third meeting between Binghamton and Yale. The Bearcats visited the Bulldogs last season and lost by nine. And in that game, they shot just 29% from the floor. A 57-48 defeat. Today, they welcome in Yale for the first time. What a feed from Moon to set Watkins up. And Imani Watkins, that's where her experience comes in. Barriman face guarding her on the wing. And when you're getting face guarded, you go back door. And that's exactly what she did. Kai Moon collects her 21st assist this season. Santucci will let it go. That's good. Moon turns it over. Here's Barriman. 
But Watkins slides back, grapples with Gorman. And this will go for Binghamton. They don't call it a jump ball, it appears. Yale dealing with a shortened bench. They dress 11 today. The Bulldogs not only missing Simpson, their leading scorer, but also Tory Andrew. They're basically only deep or threat from deep. Yeah, you know, injury early in the season. Uh, it's still a long season, so you know, there's plenty of time, but you know, when you're only dressing a certain amount, it really gives the opportunity to those other players to kind of step up. Andrew, the only one on this Bulldogs roster shooting better than 30% from behind the arc. That's a nifty move from James for her second bucket. For Binghamton to be successful, you know, they need to be able to play inside out. So when Alyssa James is scoring, it moves that defensive focus inside and enables shooters like Amani Watkins, Carly Bowl, and Jasmine Cena to get those open shots. Barriman denied by James. Alyssa James picks up her first block. Binghamton within four with 4.20 left in the first. where bright minds meet, where innovative education and groundbreaking research thrive. A world-class institution with renowned faculty and endless opportunity. This is Binghamton University, the premier public university in the Northeast. Respect is hard work, respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect coaches, players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Today at Simmons Rockwell, your pre-owned vehicle superstores, you'll find these previous rentals. 2017 Jeep Renegade Latitude 4x4s with 17-inch alloy wheels, remote start, backup camera, cruise control, and 11,000 to 16,000 miles for only $18,099. See more savings online at Simmons-Rockwell.com and shop the Simmons Rockwell location near you. So, how do you define a good life? Alyssa James just came up with her second block in as many possessions. Moon. Offensive board, James, and she's got the putback, and James is starting to feel it. Yeah, you know, she has gotten into the right spot here underneath, and with that drive for Moon, it puts her in a position to rebound and put the ball back up. Three ball knocked down from deep by Gabby Nelson. Nelson now four of eight from deep. Boland looks for the answer, and she responds. And you know, as we were, you know, in the media timeout here, I was looking at the stats, and you noticed Binghamton actually hadn't taken a three-pointer yet, and from a team that does shoot, you know, from the three-point frequently, uh, it was a little odd that, you know, Yale was one for five, Binghamton still nothing, and uh, Carly Boland start, fills that uh, stat line. The Bearcats have averaged 27 three-point attempts per game this season. Right on, Chelsea. It took them about six minutes to get there first. Watkins tried for James, but James on a different page. Bearcats 
Not a notable number for the opening six minutes, Chelsea. Yale collected four offensive rebounds. Yeah, you know, Alyssa James out for a few minutes, uh, enabled Yale to kind of get an advantage inside, and they've been able to take advantage of that with a couple of second chance points. And they've also, you know, another big number is turnovers. There is one turnover that Watkins converts for two to tie the game. That's Alexandra Mond. And she'll flip it back to Marianne Santucci, the captain from straight away. Rebecca Carmody corrals the carrot. Binghamton searches for their first lead this afternoon. And offensively, it's just been a better pace for Binghamton these last couple of minutes. They were playing a little scrappy the first couple of minutes, and they've been able to really settle in and find their own pace. The California native Barriman brings it to the front court against Kai Moon. Puts up the feed and calmly hits it. Barriman good for about 12 points per game. She's racked up nearly 30 minutes per game. Coming off uh, injury shortened freshman season in which she missed a good chunk because of a broken hand. Coming out with a great sophomore campaign. Amani Watkins still working on a great senior campaign. Barrowman again against Moon and Kai Moon comes up with a block. Yeah, Barrowman in those increased minutes, she's really shown what she can do and She's been able to really keep defenders off balance. She can get to the rim. She likes to pull up, and I think we've seen all of those things so far in, in barely 10 minutes. Barrowman sat out from late November to mid-January because of that hand injury. Marianne Santucci misses the layup. Again, Binghamton a chance to take the lead, but again, the turnover gets, rather his pass gets intercepted. And here comes Santucci. Today marked her 51st career start. They go inside, but James got a hand on it. And that's, you know, Berkowitz, when she posts inside, she is so strong. And I think that's why this matchup between her and James is going to be so exciting to watch this afternoon because both of them just so strong in the paint, and it's really going to be a, a, a battle of muscle down there. Berkowitz 6-2, James 6-1. We close in on the final 35 seconds of the opening quarter from Vestal. Long try. Nelson put too much on it. James with the nifty box set. In talking with Coach Allison Booth before the game, she talked about Binghamton really, they might force them to shoot a lot of threes and they're gonna have to make them. They've made a couple so far in this first period, but you see a couple of long threes and you know, Binghamton, if you're not getting to the rim, you know, it's not a bad shot selection. Carmody rips right past Mond, gives Binghamton the lead, and Barrowman comes up short. So with the late flourish, Binghamton grabs a lead heading to break. 17-15 after one.
Binghamton owns a two-point lead as we head for the second quarter. Chelsea, the story of that first, we saw an early benching of Alyssa James, but she responded with three buckets. Yeah, you know, she really settled in after a couple of minutes on the bench, and Binghamton as a whole offensively kind of settled in. A couple of unforced turnovers that I'm sure Coach Simino would like to see them work on in this second period, but overall a good uh, finish to that first period for Binghamton. And they really forced Yale to the perimeter. 10 of 20 field goal attempts from the Bulldogs came from behind the arc. This one comes inside the arc. It comes from Megan Gorman, and she gets herself on the score sheet. Kai Moon is coming off a career best 23 point effort against Buckdale. Carmody into James against Berkowitz. James lays it in. And you know what's nice here when they're running that post-to-post -post screen up top off of the four high set? When Carmody catches at the top of the key there, she can knock down that shot. So she's forcing the defender to play high, which opens up the middle there for Alyssa James posting. Barriman, left elbow, good. Eight points for the sophomore. If you talk about, you know, Simpson out, their leading scorer for Yale. Barriman really stepping up so far this afternoon and trying to fill those shoes. Allison Guth, Yale's head coach, has loved her pull-up game, saying that's made great strides this season. Rebecca Carmody with the player control foul. Player control ball, charge to number two. Jasmine Cena checks back in. And Alex Kay, the freshman from Shanker Heights, Ohio, takes the floor for the Bulldogs. Yale out of the Ivy League. Binghamton represents America East. Dangerous pass connected for Andrews. Matt Barriman, who has been running the show for Yale, gets it down low, and Cade lays it in. Great pass underneath. A little confusion there. Binghamton defense coming back off of the press, and Barriman finds her. Alex Cade did not play on Wednesday. Yale lost to Providence, 55-51. A disheartening defeat in which they had a late lead. James pulls down the offensive board and is fouled on the putback attempt. Yale is coming off of two disappointing games, overmatched against Army and then had a one-point lead vanish late against Providence. They gave up 18 points in the fourth quarter, and that's been a point of emphasis for Allison Guth's Yale Bulldogs finishing games. You know, I think for both of these teams, you talk about consistency and finishing games, and Binghamton has had a couple of, of troublesome games with that too, so I think today you look at consistency over quarters. You know, Binghamton making a late kind of comeback in that first period. Can they keep it going? throughout four periods, and Yale kind of had that quick start. Can they continue with that type of uh, pace as well? Quick movement, and Cade missed it. By the way, James hit her first free throw after missing her first three attempts today. One point, Yale lead. Just over two minutes gone by, second quarter. Watkins own six. Inside again to James against Cade, great footwork from James. And you can see obviously the game plan going inside to Alyssa James and Rebecca Carmody making the entry pass. Watkins trying to pounce. Nelson up top. Watkins again pokes it free. Navi dives in and the jump ball will favor Binghamton. Another thing that Guth pointed out when we spoke with her, the thing that jumps off the screen when you look at the videotape of the Binghamton Bearcats, Guth said how hard they play for Linda Simino. Yeah, you know, Coach Simino, when she got here four years ago, she really implemented that culture of hard work, paying attention to detail, and, you know, this team has responded to that. There was another look at that great play by James. One point, Bearcat edge. Again to James, against Cade. Good, three point Bearcat advantage. You see now running a couple of different variations, starting in the four high set with the post to post screen up top between her and Carmody, and then this time down the floor, the back screen from Alyssa James opposite. And either way, it's going inside, doesn't matter how it gets there. 
Ellen Margaret Andrews with the rebuttal. Her first bucket. Another freshman playing some heavy minutes for Yale today. They'll go to Kirsch Navi, who commits the travel. Marianne Santucci hails from Seattle, Washington. The senior hands it off to Barriman, who knocks down another one. Coach Simino looking to the bench for a solution defensively against Barriman, who has taken it against every single person who has been set to guard her. Fifth time already she's been in the double figures. She has 10. Carmody will pull up, left it short, rebound Barriman. In traffic. Again, a pull up and off the glass and good. Barriman really filling the shoes. Tamara Simpson not playing today, as you mentioned. I mean, she's averaging, you know, 17 points a game, and you got to fill that. And uh, Barriman has clearly taken that role on, and she's been keeping the defense on their toes. Kirsch Navi with a fastball to James. Underneath Berkowitz. We have a foul underneath the rim. And this will be Binghamton basketball. Berkowitz with the first. So after taking a multitude of three balls in the first quarter, Yale has made an effort going inside. Chelsea, all seven shots for them this quarter have been inside the arc. You know, in the way Barrowman's been playing and getting to the rim, why not? Six straight from Yale. And a turnover by the Bearcats. Another one. You see Coach Guth yelling, help side, help side from the sideline as soon as that ball goes into Alyssa James. So you have Berkowitz guarding James, and then you're looking for that help side for whenever Alyssa James, if she spins towards the middle, helps waiting. Santucci under pressure, had it stolen. Watkins comes out with it. Hand off, Wasco, and the foul. You can see Kaylee Wasco ready for it. You know, when you have a guard like Amani Watkins, and she can really make any pass she wants, you always have to be ready for the ball. And Kaylee Wasco is ready for it. And as a freshman, she's seen, uh, you know, different stints of minutes here and in specific games and you know she's still working on earning that trust as a freshman and gaining that those those minutes so for her to be able to run the floor get the and one is an improvement. Wasco misses her first career collegiate free throw attempt and Yale takes it right back to the rim. Barrowman again. You know they're Yale able to get the ball to the high post there run a couple of handoffs basically screens from the high post and Binghamton either didn't switch or said they were switching and Barriman had the open lane. Barriman pulls down the board after James's miss. And she is stripped by Moon. Free throws coming up next, a three point Yale lead with 423 left in the second. There's a source of wonder inside us all. And it's why we're always looking for new ways to make things better. Because at BAE Systems, our work is inspired by the wonder inside that's always been with us, propelling us, guiding us, and leading us to a place where we're part of something bigger, where we can look inside, glimpse the future, and protect what's truly important.
This is a place where bright minds meet, where innovative education and groundbreaking research thrive. A world-class institution with renowned faculty and endless opportunity. This is Binghamton University, the premier public university in the Northeast. It's time to get back to an active lifestyle, and UHS is making it easier than ever. The new UHS Orthopedic Center is the area's leader in orthopedic care. Our new state-of-the-art facility offers the best treatment for orthopedic, podiatry, chiropractic, rheumatology, physical therapy, and much more. Plus, a comprehensive sports medicine and concussion program like no other in our area. The new UHS Orthopedic Center, an experience like no other. Visit us today on the Vestal Parkway. Today at Simmons Rockwell, your pre-owned vehicle superstores, you'll find these previous rentals. 2017 all-wheel drive Nissan Rogue SV models with climate control, heated power seat, remote start, rear view monitor, 17-inch alloys, and 11,000 to 16,000 miles for just $19,099. See more savings online at Simmons-Rockwell.com and shop the Simmons Rockwell location near you. Chelsea, Alyssa James is just two points shy of a season best. You know, the focus this second period has been get the ball to Alyssa James, and she is not disappointed. 13 points for James, but her Bearcats trail by three. Yale has grabbed the lead back in the second quarter thanks to a terrific shooting effort. Seven for eight in the first five and a half minutes. You know, the shot selection, they shot, I think, five threes in the first period. They've shot a few more, about five or so in the second, but the other shot selection, Roxy Barrowman getting to the rim, I mean, she's at 15 points, you know, in, in you know, 16 minutes. So for them, for Binghamton, they've been able to contain Berkowitz, Simpson not playing, but you've given up 15, 16 to Barrowman. Currently a 10 to 2 Yale run. Five point edge for the visiting Bulldogs. Will they try to go inside again to James? This time Carmody gets bumped. Bronwyn Davies got the forearm yeah, and picks up her first foul. Now, Chelsea, you look at some of the more misleading stats. We talked about offensive rebounds. Yale had four in the first. Oh, they've stayed parked there, but that's because they haven't <laughs> missed many shots. Exactly. You know, they've been able to get inside and you know, when you're taking a lot of threes, you have long rebounds, more opportunities for offensive rebounds, but they've been getting inside and they've been knocking them down in close range. Inside of four minutes left, first half. Moon behind the back against Berkowitz. And Berkowitz stands her ground nicely. Here comes Yale. Berkowitz gets James to commit. And Davies commits the travel. If you're Linda Simino, you want to see that your Bearcats share the ball a little bit. It's been a couple of one-on-one -on -one moves, and you're looking to get the ball to the high post, get the ball inside. Alyssa James, 13 points effort tonight, and you know, get the ball inside, and that's where you're looking to go. And a noticeable shortage of three balls from Binghamton, just two attempts today from deep. Again, inside, Berkowitz against James. Carmody mid-range. Berkowitz pulls down the rebound. She is their leading rebounder, nine per game this season, third best in the Ivy League. Watkins cleans up the Barrowman miss. You see Imani Watkins now assigned to defending Barrowman, and she's been doing a good job the last couple of possessions, forcing a couple of shots and being able to get some defensive rebounds. Imani Watkins has scored nearly 20 points per game. She has been parked at six for a while. And Cena commits the turnover as the shot clock dwindled. Barrowman to Berkowitz. Watkins, or rather James, comes up with another block. Carmody with the lead. That's good. And those types of unforced turnovers that we saw just now from Jasmine Cena, the possession before, and you know, 10 turnovers, double-digit turnovers in the first half for Binghamton, you know, and Yale's been able to convert. Now then Margaret Andrews converts for her second bucket. Andrews. 
see good help defense there on the screen. James commits the player control foul. Tried to get her shoulder her in on shoulder Berkowitz. A little bit there, yep. First one for James. And that can be frustrating too, you know, as a coach, and you see your star post player there using their shoulder like that, and you have to remind them that you're strong enough to not have to do that. You know, so that's one of those fouls that they pick up, and then you have to kind of settle them back in again and say, hey, you have your footwork, you have your moves, you don't need to do that. And I feel like with this officiating crew today, they're allowing that physical play, but as soon as someone lowers a shoulder, that's where they've really drawn the line. Yeah, we saw uh, Rebecca Carmody, a similar type of uh, player control foul. Barrowman gets her own rebound. Berkowitz. Gorman kicks to Andrews, who gives Yale a seven-point lead. The high post handoff has been giving Binghamton a little bit of trouble defensively, and when you have a handoff, you have to play it the same way as a screen. So you need to be able to communicate with your teammates. Are you switching? Are you hedging the handoff? So it causes a little bit of confusion. No confusion there. Watkins knocks down the bucket. She's got eight. And Yale hands it right back to the Bearcats because of an offensive foul. Berkowitz commits her second. Pick up to now in bonus territory in the final mid of the second quarter. Yale is right on pace. They've averaged 36 points per first half this season. Binghamton slightly behind the pace. They too average about 36 points every first half. Moon still kept off the score sheet. This is tipped off a bulldog. Barrowman got it last. <laughs> she tried. And she enjoyed. tried to make her argument. <laughs> she and Amani Watkins exchange a few playful words with each other. <laughs> Seven to shoot. And again, Moon remains off the score sheet. Two second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Yale minus their leading score. Owns a five point lead over the Bearcats, who are perfect at home this season. Moon tries to kick up the pace for Barrowman. Kick up top to Mont. Over Watkins. Got her own rebound. And the Bearcats will get some time to work with here if this is, in fact, a shot clock violation. New rule this year. They reset the game clock to when the shot clock expires on a violation. So if anything, it might give the Bearcats a, a fraction of a second or more. It's Lizzie Spindler, the freshman from Taylor, Pennsylvania. Sporting number 22, she will inbound this ball for Binghamton. So no time added, simply 2.8 seconds. Watkins, a long way to go. Gets it free, just short. Got some net, but the outside of it. And uh, Yale Bulldogs headed to the locker room with a five-point lead at the break. Respect is hard work. Respect is dedication. Respect is earned on the court or on the field. Respect doesn't judge based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Respect is being the first conference to partner with the You Can Play Project. And the first conference in the LGBT Sports Safe Founders Club. Respect coaches, players, and the game. Respect similarities. Respect differences. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. Spread respect. is a place where bright minds meet, where innovative education and groundbreaking research thrive. A world-class institution with renowned faculty and endless opportunity. This is Binghamton University, the premier public university in the Northeast.
All right, Chelsea, why don't you?
It's halftime in Vestal, and the visiting Yale Bulldogs lead the Binghamton Bearcats by five. Hello again, everybody. We welcome you back to Vestal, New York. She's Chelsea. I'm Tim, and Chelsea, make no bones about it, that first half belonged to Roxy Barriman. Absolutely, 16 points on seven for 14 shooting. I mean, we talk about Tamara Simpson being out today and having to fill those scoring shoes. She has absolutely done that. I mean, Simpson averaging 17 a game, Barriman has 16 in the first half. So she's been inside, she's getting the, to the rim, pulling up, I mean, she's been doing everything for Yale. Now for the Bearcats, they've made their plan pretty clear. They're going yep. inside, and they're going inside to Alyssa James. Get the ball inside. You know, the first couple minutes she struggled, but once she got back into the game, I mean, 13 points, three blocks, six rebounds. I mean, she has really been the focus of their offensive attack. I think if you're Linda Simono, the big thing, though, you look at from the score sheet for the first half, turnovers, the Bearcats made 11. 11 turnovers, and Yale having nine points off of those turnovers. So you look at it, it's a five-point game. You'll get nine points off of turnovers. Uh, you have four missed free throws, and Kai Moon scoreless. So we're going to see some adjustments, I think, on that coming into the second half. It was a fast-paced first half, and there were plenty of highlights for the Bearcats. Alyssa James led the way. She had 13. And you see they were looking to go inside, and Alyssa James really making the move. Carmody, a couple of attacks, that rip through from the elbow that she is so good at, and Imani Watkins having her fair share as well. Watkins was four of eight from the floor. It's a good sign for Binghamton. She was coming off of a rocky shooting effort against Bucknell. But for the Yale Bulldogs on defense, they've done their best to contain James and Jen Berkowitz, though, couldn't hold her that time. Yeah, you know, we talk about the matchup early in pregame about Berkowitz versus James, and so far James has been winning that matchup and Berkowitz having limited touches. But if you're Yale, you're saying, well, you know what? Look what Roxy Barriman has been doing, so you're okay with that. Jen Berkowitz has just two points for the Yale Bulldogs, but she's been doing just fine getting some help from her teammates. Halftime continues from the event center. Binghamton trails 35-30 to 30 on ESPN3. Yeah, leads by five. Chelsea, one thing we've seen notably absent from the Bearcats game today, their three-point shooting, they only took three attempts in that first yeah, half. Yeah, we talk about the focus going inside to Alyssa James, so I think that's been part of the uh, puzzle here for Binghamton. They've been able to get the ball inside. Alyssa James with 13 points, so she's been successful inside. And a couple times, actually, where she's went to dish out, it's actually ended in turnovers. So there could be part of the game plan continuing into the second half to continue pounding the ball inside. And speaking of three pointers, Yale had half of their attempts from deep in the first half or in the first quarter. In the second quarter, they went nothing but inside. 
Yeah, you know, we talked about Roxy Barron, and she's just been able to work her way inside. They've run a couple of handoffs from that high post where they've been able to really just get to the rim. So, I mean, if you can get an easy two, you know, go for it. So I think that's that's what they've been able to do, the difference from the first to the second period. Okay, your Yale's head coach, Allison Gooden. How do you approach the second half with what you saw from the first half? Well, I think you continue to get the ball to Roxy Barron continue to implement a couple of different key players here. Berkowitz has had limited touches, so looks to get her involved a little bit. And Alyssa James going inside. We talk, you know, Allison Guth and then yelling, help D, help D. And you're going to probably see a couple of double downs on Alyssa James. Okay, if there's one thing we've learned covering Binghamton the past two seasons, you can never count Amani Watkins out. What needs to change for the Bearcats to get her back to her usual self? I think just ball movement and shot selection, and they've, you know, a little bit of sloppy play on offense. So for them just to settle into their offense, they know their game plan, they know how they play. So for them to control the pace going into the second half, just taking good shots. Binghamton trails by five at halftime. We get a peek at the stats again. A lot of three-pointers coming in the first quarter, but not a lot coming in the second. And the Bearcats have won the board battle. Yell leads 35-30. Second half coming up next on ESPN3. The Bearcats shot 47% from the floor in the first half. That's good, but they turned the ball over 11 times, and they trail by five. Yeah, you know, Binghamton really successful going inside to Alyssa James. So moving into the second half, we're going to look to continue that, get the ball inside to Alyssa James. But as I suspect, you'll probably see some double downs here from Yale, some more congestion in the paint. So for Alyssa James, it's really going to be shot selection, feeling the defense, and being able to get the ball out to her shooters. Tim Hyman, Chelsea Lascalzo. This is ESPN 3's presentation of women's college basketball. Yale visits Binghamton for the first time ever. The Bulldogs wear blue. The Bearcats wear white. And they go inside to Gorman. Right hook. Good. Got it over James. You see Binghamton starting the second half in the zone. Played mostly man in that first half. and. We're going to see if they're going to look to clog the paint and maybe help each other a little bit on the Roxy Barrowman attack. Three ball goes in and out from Carbody. Check that along two from Carbody. Again, back to zone defense for the Bearcats. Berkowitz caught off guard, and Watkins picks up the loose ball. And those are the, the little things defensively that Imani Watkins does. You know, a lot of players might recognize that as, oh, that ball is about to go out of bounds. And 
gives Berkowitz another chance to grab it, but Imani Watkins is just so aggressive defensively and offensively where she knows I'm gonna go grab that ball and I'm gonna make it a Binghamton possession. Kai Moon did not score in the first half. Free ball, good, she's on the board. And that's what Binghamton needs. I mean, she's coming off a career high 23 points the other night versus Bucknell, and for her to be scoreless hurts them offensively. They'll swing it to Andrews. Berkowitz, two points in the first, splits two and lays it in. Berkowitz taking advantage of some early touches there. In that 3-2 zone, the middle was open a little bit, and Berkowitz is able to split the defenders. James will back in and gets the easy route, but missed. The follow is good. Third time's a charm. Megan Gorman went down, did not get a call, and James seals it on her third attempt. Four-point game. Even, even Alyssa James is laughing a little bit at herself. James matches the season best with 15. Off to Andrews again from the corner. Santucci a three, good. And on the limited attempts from Santucci, I mean, she's two for four here from three-point attempts. Santucci averaged about four and a half points per game last season. And Carmody lays it in. A good decision. You can see her, her maturing as a player where she's able to make that decision and find the rim versus trying to dish it to a crowded paint. Line drive from Barron is off the mark. Alyssa James tracks it down and a foul against the Bulldogs. Andrews on the reach in. Just another hustle play from Melissa James. You talk about team defense in the pregame this afternoon, and Binghamton is at their best when every single person is contributing on defense. Opposing teams have shot just 35% against the Bearcats this season. It's the second best rate in America East. Gale is shooting 46% though today. That's a bowl and three ball that won't fall. And you can see Alyssa James's first half performance opens that shot for Carly Bowl. And as soon as the ball goes inside, the focus is there. Mon collects her first bucket. And Bolin can't keep it alive. And those are the unforced turnovers that we talk about that caused some trouble in the first half of Binghamton. And, you know, the guards are looking up the court and they pass the ball and someone's not looking and it goes out of bounds. And then you come down and, you know, Yale scores and it's a four point swing there. And those are tough to come back from. No good for Bowerman. Her second miss of the second half. Collected though by Berkowitz. Barriman again, tough battle against James. No good from Berkowitz. Watkins looking for double figures. Reverse from Carmody, no good. And you see those quick offensive possessions from Binghamton where they tend to rush up the floor and Imani Watkins sometimes, she's looking for her shot, but sometimes she takes the first shot, which might not be the best shot. And for them, offensively, you know, you want to see them kind of settle. Moon comes out with it. Watkins reaches double figures. When he had the two on one, taking advantage. Eighth time in eight games that Watkins has reached double figures. Makes it a five point game. And Andrews commits the travel. Again, if you're just joining us, Yale is playing without their leading score. Tamara Simpson is missing today's game due to a family commitment. And there goes about 17 points per game for Yale. They've filled in the gaps, they lead by five. Cena spins it to James. Watkins from the corner. Bowling has the offensive rebound. Great ball movement there. 
Alyssa James recognizing the congestion in the paint. Flare pass to Imani Watkins. She has the open shot. And any open shot for Imani Watkins is a good shot. So she's able to, you know, take the open three and Carly Boland's in the right place for the offensive rebound. Perkowitz lost the handle. Cena and Santucci grapple. And the Bearcats will have possession when we come back. 44, 41 Yale, 432 left in the third. Sophomore Megan Gorman is four for her last eight from the floor, and importantly, two for two today. Yale continuing to push the ball inside. Barriman has been quieted a little bit, but a couple of other, you know, uh, Andrew Santucci really doing their part and stepping up and continuing the scoring for Yale. Yale holds a three-point lead over Binghamton. Past the midway point of the third quarter. Bulldogs are bidding for their second road win of the season. Their first one was as big as they get. A victory over TCU. James backs in against Cade. And a foul against Cade. Doing all she could to contain Alyssa James. Yeah, Alyssa James is so strong inside. And it's so hard to defend her. I mean, Alyssa James has her on her back. There's not much you can do once she has position. Kate out of the Laurel School, where she not only cracked 1,000 points, also pulled down more than 1,000 rebounds. Alyssa James to the free throw line. James has already picked up her first double-double of the season. 16 points, 10 rebounds, with a lot of time to play. And she goes two of two. One-point game. Binghamton back in the 3-2 zone here. A lot of focus with the Monty Watkins up top. See how Yale responds. They force it inside, and James gets a fingertip on it. 
Watkins. Bolin to put Binghamton on top. Lifted way short. I feel like Boland is kind of put in that position a lot. You know, Binghamton down one. Last game we were here in November, we were down, you know, two points or so at Binghamton, and she's able to knock down those big shots, just not that one. Speaking of Boland, she picks up a foul away from the ball. Boland had a huge night on this floor back on the 13th of November. When she poured in 14 points and hauled in 14 rebounds in a game against Cortland. Cade had the pass tipped, and it's recovered by Johnny Wincott, radio voice of the Binghamton women's basketball team. Good hands. <laughs> Saved the laptop, protected the radio gear. No new clock for yet. 12 seconds to work with. Into traffic, grabbed by Mond. Yeah, Yell got a little lucky there because Mond was not the intended receiver of that pass. It kind of fell through a couple of hands and landed. Zina, long train. Just the third from deep today for the Bearcats ties the game. Foul away from the ball. Goes against Binghamton. It's James. Number two for James. Andrews to inbound. Santucci, quick release. That's good. When you're playing that 2-3 zone, you know, defending out of bounds, that opposite corner is usually where the opening is, and Yale found it. A new season high for Santucci with nine. Yale back on top. James again, and she's fouled by Berkowitz. And again for Yale, the big discussion was finishing games, and it's even more challenging tonight because they're missing one of their go-to players in Simpson. Right, and, and Simpson, you know, we talk about her scoring her 17 points a game, but defensively, she brings so much to Yale. Everyone is kind of having to take that extra step defensively, and she was Defensive Player of the Year last year, and when you lose that intensity, it not only the scoring, but the scoring that comes from that defense you miss out on. James goes one of two. Simpson. Already the all-time leader in career steals at Yale with 255. Not with the team though today. Her Bulldogs lead by two. Great intensity on defense here. You talk about the team defensive mentality from Binghamton. Barrowman had a good look though. Binghamton ball. And Barrowman mining her shot there. She's gone quiet here in the second half. I'm Tim. She's Chelsea. We're glad you made us part of your Saturday. Yale leads by two, but it's now tied as Carmody hits. Yeah, Carmody's been so good with that rip through. I mean, that's her signature. She's going to get the ball to the middle, and she's going to look to James. And if James isn't open, she's going to rip through and attack. 42 points the last five games for Carmody. All starts. Berkowitz knocks it down from the baseline. Watkins got there, but Berkowitz at 6-2 with the high release. Watkins isn't able to defend it. Just the third bucket from Berkowitz. Second on the team in scoring. Might we see more from her in the closing quarter? Watkins kick to Cena for the lead. Bounds, hauls in the rebound. Final minute, third quarter. It has been a back and forth opening nine minutes. Yale turns it over. James comes up with a steal. On the drive, they feed Carmody. Free throws coming up. 
and Carmody has just been in the right spot at the right time tonight. She's able to, she's been driving from the elbow. She's been attacking the rim, putbacks, offensive rebounds, hustle plays. I mean, the, this is what Coach Simino and the Binghamton staff have been looking for from Rebecca Carmody. Member of the all-rookie team two years ago. Found more of a bench role as the sixth player last season. But I was fought her way back into the starting five. It's been a tough day from the free throw line for Binghamton. Just four for ten. They get four for eleven. Yeah, no matter how this game finishes for Binghamton, that's a stat you're going to look at. Magnified by this being just a one possession game. Binghamton leaving seven points on the table. That's Gabby Nelson, a three ball. Bond fights James, and Boland comes out with it. Watkins had the all streaks pattern, but the Bearcats play it conservatively. Shot clock off. Santucci waits at the top of the key. Watkins ready to go. Gets the good look and smoothly knocks it down to end the third quarter. Well, that's to the fourth, tied at 51. Chelsea Binghamton and Yale almost swapped the bucket for bucket in that third quarter. You know, Berkowitz getting a couple of more touches in the third quarter than she had seen in the first half, and she's been able to convert on a couple of plays and be part of a lot of plays. And Imani Watkins finding her groove. I mean, the, clock, the shot clock was off, clock winding down, and Imani Watkins said, give me the ball. Sometimes you'll see games, you call it a game of runs. This has been the opposite. Longest run for Binghamton, a 6 nothing run. Longest run for Yale today, a 10 to 2 run. That has been it. And it makes sense that we headed to the fourth, tied at 51. Santucci looks for Mond against James. Carmody got a piece. 
you know, and you're, you're in the huddle here in between quarters, between third and fourth, game is tied, you're telling your team, you need to win these next 10 minutes. You can't, you know, the rest of the game happened, you gotta work and finish, complete these 10 minutes. Berkowitz got a piece of James's attempt. Binghamton outscored Yale 21 to 16 in the third quarter. After trailing by five at halftime. Cena in and out. And a foul underneath the rim against Berkowitz. Tough call for Yale. That's four for Berkowitz. Yeah, Berkowitz is a big part of this team and second leading scorer and six tonight, but she's been a part of so many plays and the defense has to focus on her. So without her in the game, it opens up a little bit here for Binghamton. New shot clock for the Bearcats. Won't go for James. Cade pulls down the rebound. Berkowitz had such a heavy hand in their win on the road against TCU. She poured in 24 points and held TCU's leading post player, Jordan Moore, to just seven. They will need her to stay in this game. That's Paramin. Off the mark, her fourth miss in the second half. And this jump ball will belong to the Bearcats. See Behrman getting the ball there at the high post. She got to the rim, had a good attempt, and she's just been quiet this second half. I mean, Berkowitz getting more touches, Santucci, Andrews getting some open shots, and Behrman, I mean, put on a stellar performance in the first half, and we'll see if how much impact she has in this fourth period. Carbody finds James. James hit the underside. Turnover, it's Watkins, and she gives the Bearcats their first lead since the second quarter. And now the game comes down, you talk about scoring runs, you're gonna see runs, who's gonna get the stop? So Binghamton comes down, they score, can they get a stop here? Trey from Nelson won't go, and it's out of bounds. Binghamton yeah, ball. Yale's largest lead, seven. Binghamton's largest lead, just three. It's been that type of ball game today from the event center. Kicking off a fun double header, the Binghamton men host Colgate. Coming up shortly after this game concludes. You can catch that game on ESPN3 as well. Watkins. Double dribbled. Watkins thought that she had the crossover, but sometimes when it looks awkward, it's just going to get caught. Got a timeout. Two minutes gone by fourth quarter. Binghamton 53, Yale 51. We're back with more on ESPN3.
We take a look at the road ahead for the Bearcats, and it will bring Linda Simino back home. Bring up ventures to Bryant to take on the current winless Bulldogs. And it unfolds on Thursday at 7. Chelsea, Simino already has about 100 on the pass list for that game. Yeah, you know, it's always nice when you can go back home and you can see childhood friends, you can see high school friends, and obviously everyone's excited to welcome her back home. Megan Gorman ties the game. Here comes Watkins. She is fouled by Barriman. Bryant, another Bulldogs team, made it all the way to the NEC title game last year, falling to Robert Morse. And now they look for their first win. That, though, in the far future for Binghamton. They're focused, rest solely on the final seven plus minutes of this one. And Amadi Watkins has an, adds another free throw miss to the Bearcats' ledger. And another nine missed free throws this afternoon for Binghamton. And like I said, no matter which way this game turns for Binghamton, that is going to be a point of emphasis going into the locker room. Binghamton four for 13. Mond to Nelson. Off her own foot, Cena. Moon in transition, had a good look. Waits and feeds it back to Cena. Binghamton looks to remain perfect at home. James spins around Gorman and gets the bucket. Yeah, that was some fancy footwork. I do not know how she ended up on the other side of the rim there, but able to lay it in. First time to 20 points to James this season. Three ball, that's Barrowman. Won't go. Rebound, Gorman, and she's got the touch. Gorman matches a season best. She has eight points. And again, back and forth, one bucket for another. It's really going to be who is going to make the most amount of stops in the next six plus minutes. Monty Watkins with 14 points this afternoon. Against Santucci, lost the handle and a foul against the Bulldogs. And Allison Guth not thrilled at all about that one. Keep in mind for Yale, Jan Berkowitz, their active leading scorer, has four fouls. Watkins, they'll go inside to James. Rebound, Gorman. Yale able to move the ball quickly against the zone, and Barrowman, like we said, has been a little bit quiet this second half. Andrews on the floor. Seven to shoot. And Gorman is fouled in the process of shooting. Cena gets called for the foul. And Gorman, who's gone 5 of 12 from the free throw line coming into today's game, will shoot a pair. The scoring in the second half have come in isolated clips for the Bulldogs. They have not put up back-to-back -back buckets against Binghamton here in the second half. And this four-point stretch of un uninterrupted offense is their first of the second half. They're on top by two. And a dangerous pass is swatted out of bounds. Yale, yeah, not too many trips to the free throw line tonight, uh, this afternoon, but able to convert. Only missed one free throw so far this afternoon. Into no man's land. They call that an unforced error. Yale looks to extend their lead. You talk about making stops. Yale's made the last couple of them. And they've been able to convert on the other end. James got a piece. 
So Yale yeah, will keep it. And Carly Bolin will check in for Jasmine Cena. To the corner, Santucci a three. Harmony clipped by Santucci. And this will be Binghamton ball. Big Cats possession coming out of the break. It's a two point game on ESPN3. It's been a pressure cooker today, and Chelsea points have been hard to come by in this fourth quarter. The fourth quarter has been a defensive, intensive matchup. The first three periods, we saw 30-plus points between both teams, only 10 so far, and just over five minutes to go. The Bulldogs on a two-point lead. This game has seen five lead changes. That's Watkins, tough angle. Offensive board, James. And Santucci cleans the glass. Another empty possession for the Bearcats. A bit too many for Linda Simino's liking here in the fourth. We have Berkowitz back in the game. She's at four fouls, so Binghamton most likely going to look to go at her when she's matched up against Alyssa James. Three to shoot. Barrowman. Tough look. Won't go. One possession game. Final four minutes of regulation. Kai Moon has just three points today. And it's tipped by Andrews and recovered by Barrowman. Another turnover for the Bearcats. 15 turnovers today for the Binghamton squad. Inside, Berkowitz. And that's Carmody against Andrews. 
Andrews might have gotten a piece. Some quick possessions here for Binghamton. Not able to get a couple of close layups, a couple of missed shots, a couple of uh, quickly four shots. This one will stay with Yale. Carly Boland got a fingertip on it. Binghamton 0 for their last four from the floor. With a pair of turnovers mixed into that stretch. Exactly. If you're Yale, you really want to work for a good shot here. Six to shoot. Gorman and James swats it away, but got contact. Narrowly missed her fourth block of the season. And Gorman back to the free throw line. And that one would have put James in sole possession of fifth all time in career blocks for an America East player. She's currently tied with Erica Beverly, 196 in her career. Gorman has come on strong in the second half, but she goes one of two from the line. Tough fight. James takes on three challengers and prompts the jump ball. So Chelsea, as Barrowman has been quieted by the Bearcats, D. Gorman has poured in seven in the second half. Foreman, Santucci, Andrews, three of them stepping up, and it might not seem significant, but when you have those players who are contributing, they're moving the ball, they're knocking down long shots, they're above their average, that's what hurts you. And special credit goes to this Yale defense. They've only surrendered four points in the fourth quarter. Kept alive, Berkowitz. This has been a lengthy possession for the Bulldogs. Now that's good. Santucci gives Yale a five point lead at a timeout taken by the Bearcats. Now, when you're talking Binghamton, you know, you're down five, about two and a half minutes to go. They're looking for good possessions. They're looking to execute offensively. The last few possessions we've talked about having empty possessions. They want to get the ball in, look inside to James. If it's not there, kicking out, knocking down open shots. They're going to have to knock down shots. If they get to the free throw line, you're almost in the bonus here. You got to get there and you got to make them. That is Allison Guth in the center of that huddle. And when we spoke to her yesterday, she touched upon an example of where Yale needs to improve in their decision-making late in games. And she brought up their most recent loss to Providence. Had a chance to get on the board late, missed the shot, got an offensive rebound, and then forced a bad shot. Now, though, they've slowed down their pace, and they're really saving for those good looks. Exactly. They've been able to come down, be patient offensively, and take advantage of some second chances. Guth looks to guide Yale to their fourth win of the season. The America East slate continues for the Bulldogs. They will travel to Stony Brook to take on the Seawolves on Wednesday night. Yale leads by five. It's James against Berkowitz. Good from James. And credits to Berkowitz because usually when you see a player, they have four fouls. They almost play a little bit softer on defense, and she's not taking, she's not backing down, and uh, she used her full force without fouling to make that possession hard for Alyssa James. Andrews out to Barriman. That's good, her first of the second quarter. And if there's a time for Barriman to get going, I mean, that's the time you want to knock down a shot. Barriman now with a career best 19 point effort. First points coming in the second half. Puts Yell on top by six. Cena pressures the ball. And a jump ball favors Binghamton. Well, Barman just kept shooting and finally got a good look that she converted. And that is a big stop for Binghamton there because there's about 20 or so seconds left on the shot clock. You talk about you get that ball back probably at about 115 or so. So you're saving yourself some seconds there to get more of an offensive possession. Moon to Carmody. Against Gorman. Won't go. 
Yale under pressure in their own end. Watkins screened by Berkowitz. Gorman's pressure, but a timeout taken by Allison Guth. So again, crunch time for Yale, and now it's basically put up or shut up time for the Bulldogs. Exactly. You can see after that last possession, that last miss, the defensive intensity really pick up for Binghamton. And when you look back at this game and you're Binghamton, you're going to look at these empty possessions coming back in the last few minutes and the decision making, some shot selection, and obviously the missed free throws is a big part of it as well. All right, take me into that huddle. What is Binghamton discussing? You have to execute. You have to get a stop and you have to execute. The Bearcats have gone four and three this season. They've alternated between wins and losses since a stirring victory over Penn. The Bearcats have already knocked off one Ivy League team and now they'll need to do some work to knock off another. Yeah, you know what, it's still just a two possession game. So a minute 14 is plenty of time. It just, when you're winning by six, it seems like way too much time. And when you're down by six, it doesn't seem like nearly enough. So you'll see, trying to get a defensive stop here. 70 seconds left in regulation. Santucci guards the ball from Moon. Carmody got a piece. Main maintains, Yale maintains possession and a reach and foul against Binghamton. That goes against Kai Moon. And a new shot clock for the Bulldogs. And another timeout called. And that will leave Yale with two left. You know, and that's just a tough fall of the ball there. Carmody almost had a full possession of it, knocking away that pass, and Yale able to recover it. And Bearcats with another foul to give here. We'll see if they have they give up that foul with Yale going to the basket. Join us on Sunday. Women will host the Highlanders of NJIT. Comes up on the 10th, 2 p.m. tip. The next women's broadcast for the Binghamton Bearcats on ESPN3. James, Carmody, Kirsch, Navi, Watkins, and Moon on the floor for Binghamton. Andrews, Berkowitz, Santucci, Gorman, and Barriman on the floor for Yale. Kirsch, Navi pressures the ball. They get it in for Barriman. Yale leads by a half dozen. Watkins tried the steal. Finds Berkowitz, blocked away. James got a piece. Watkins alone, four-point game. And that's a great defensive possession because they had a foul to give and they didn't have to use it. Here comes Andrews, blocked again by James. Here comes Carmody. Lost the handle, reach and foul Yale. Two resounding well-timed blocks from Melissa James. Yeah, that's that defensive intensity. And like I said, they still have a foul to give Binghamton and they didn't have to use it. They can play with an added intensity and not have to worry about sending Yale to the free throw line. Linda Simino wants a timeout. So with those blocks coming in two key moments, Alyssa James now pulls into fourth all time in America East history, 198 career blocks, and she picked the right time for two of them. Absolutely, I mean, those are huge possessions. Six point game becomes a four point game. Harmony's gonna get to the free throw line. She has to make these two to close the gap here to two. And then you're putting the pressure on Yale because you're still gonna have 4.6 differential here in shot clock. And you don't want to put the microscope too much intensity on a freshman, but Ellen Margaret Andrews has to look for a better shot there. Yeah, you know, they kind of rush it. They were doing so well as far as maintaining the pace there. And then I think that 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 excitement that comes in playing in this type of game kind of took over. Yeah, for the Bearcats looking to erase this four-point deficit. 34.6 seconds left in regulation. And so often, coaches will look at non-conference play to get tuned up for conference play, and both coaches getting their money's worth and preparing their teams for more pressure come conference time. Absolutely, I mean, these types of game situations, you can practice in practice, but you're never gonna get the intensity and the emotion, the adrenaline, and the mental toughness that has to come through in these types of situations. So the foul on Barriman puts Carmody on the free throw line. Binghamton looks to exercise the demon from the charity strike. 
as a team, four for 13 this afternoon. And Carmody helps erase the woes at least partly. She's already had two misses today. This to make it a two point game. And she does just that. Barrowman draws two. Dale has one timeout. Barrowman lost the handle. It's out of bounds. And it's Binghamton ball. And Linda Simino wants a timeout. Uh, the Bearcats thought that Barrowman had dribbled on the sideline. Then they got a piece of it, and it last touched Barrowman. Yeah, you know, coming out of that free throw, you expect them to press after that made free throw. I mean, that is how you run a diamond press. You have to move the ball to the sideline. You're forcing the offense to one side or the other. I mean, you get the ball to the middle, you're totally done. But they do a good job of getting Barrowman over to the sideline, trap her. She gets kind of congested there, and Binghamton ends up with the ball back and a huge opportunity for to take the last shot. The officiating crew will take a look. Jeffrey Smith and Mark Resch over by the scores table to look at the replay. It's on the far side of the floor, and that does make it a little bit more difficult to get a great view of what unfolded. But how about this 15-second sequence for Binghamton? James comes up with a block. Watkins finds the bucket. James comes up with another block, and that sets up Carmody for a couple of the free throws. Yeah, big free throws there by Carmody and a three really defensive stops. You're talking about, we talked about runs of scoring and runs of getting stops and Binghamton able to get three huge stops here in the last minute. Well, if you're just joining us, Yale led 35-30 at halftime. And they did that without their leading score, Tamara Simpson. It was a monster first half for Roxy Barriman who poured in 16 points. And the Bearcats watched as Alyssa James collected 14 of her own in the first. And in the second half, Binghamton's D locked down on Barriman, and that forced others for Yale to step up. And up until this point, about maybe two minutes of gameplay ago, the recipe was working for Yale. Yeah, they were up six, and then a couple of quick possessions. You talk about empty possession for Binghamton. Yale comes down, has a couple of empty ones. Credit to Alyssa James, the Binghamton defense. And Binghamton really, they have 29.6 seconds. They have fouls to give, and they're in a good position here. Officially, six blocks for Alyssa James. She came in averaging 4.7 blocks per game, second best rate in all of Division I, and today will help boost that rate. Exactly. You know, they're going to come down here. They're going to look to score, and if Yale does get the ball back, they still have a foul to give. They're not going to try to, but if they have to, they can play that intensity. Tom Petty's waiting is the hardest part, plays here at the event center, as all three officials now swoop in to check out that replay. Well done by the event center. <laughs> Our good man, Pete Dabransky, with his finger on the pulse of the music scene. What's interesting, Chelsea, about this game is that neither team is led by more than seven, yet we've only seen five lead changes talked about that second half over the course of the first 10 minutes or so. Binghamton kept tying it but could never get over that hump and now they're going to need to get over that hump one more time. Exactly. Really the last time they're going to have to and for them best case scenario you know you're knocking down this shot you can get a stop maybe one more possession you know Yale looking to make the stop here Binghamton I mean even if you go into overtime Binghamton you have the momentum. Yale has one timeout left. Binghamton currently has two timeouts left. Shot clock is off inside of 30 seconds. And the officials have continued to go over these replays. As we hit the final 30 seconds of this fourth quarter. For a reminder, the men are in action coming up a little later on this afternoon. They host the Colgate Raiders. We'll be thrilled to bring you that game also on ESPN3. Verdict has been reached. Jeffrey Smith, Mark Resch, and Rob McDowell 
preparing for the biggest call of today's game. And Jeffrey Smith will summon both Allison Guth and Linda Simino. It will be Binghamton ball. They rule that it last touched a Yale Bulldog. And Rob McDowell comes over to give us the word. Two point game. Watkins to inbound. Barrowman in front of her. And they connect with James. On the floor against Berkowitz. And Linda Simona wanted a timeout. Came before the shot. And she burns one of her remaining two. You know, with the review that we just had for the last about four to five minutes of review time here, and both coach have both coaches having plenty of time to tell their players exactly what they wanted. Linda Simino obviously not happy with the choices that were made, or you know, it looked like they were going into James and possibly a handoff to Imani Watkins off of the inbounder. Um, but Imani Watkins well covered by Yale and Melissa James had to take it to the rim and Linda Simino obviously not comfortable with that decision so she's going to try it again. What's notable about this scoring for Yale that three ball coming from Roxy Barriman coming from a team that has struggled so mightily from deep this season they came in in the bottom 15 percent in shooting from deep but that might prove to be their biggest bucket of the day. Yeah you know especially Barriman she was so hot in the first half limited scoring in the third and fourth quarters and she hits a big three moon to inbound finds Watkins Watkins will retreat to midcourt against Barriman tough angle she got the roll Amadia Watkins comes up with the biggest bucket of the game, and now it's Yale's turn. Yale now to talk it over. They will advance the ball here with 12.2 to go. I mean, Amadia Watkins, what an angle with that right hand, and she's able to follow through, and she looked like she fumbled it a bit going through the lane, and she's able to finish it off. Eight points in the first half for Watkins. A dozen coming here in the second. And just enough English to tie this game at 63 all. Yeah, that was about the longest point four seconds I think anybody has seen so far. <laughs> so now Yale will get situated. And the Bulldogs have plenty of time to work with. 12.2 to go. And now the question is, who gets the shot for the Bulldogs? You know, I think you have to look inside at Berkowitz, um, Santucci, Andrews, both having hot hands. Barriman having a hot hand. I mean, they don't need a three. You know, they just need to get to the rim. Binghamton still has um, still has one foul to give, so they can play with that defensive intensity. And for them, it's about getting a stop. You want to get a stop? For them, you want to get a steal and score, or you're looking to go to overtime. That is best case scenario. And given how tough James has been in this fourth quarter, does Yale shy away from going close? You know, I think you have to take the high percentage shot. You have to try to get to the rim. You have to force a foul, force the free throw line. You have to make Binghamton defend. Yale is out of timeouts. Binghamton has one. Andrews to inbound to Santucci against Moon. Off to Barriman. James got a piece. Watkins scoops. Two seconds. Watkins for the win. No. And we're heading to overtime. And that is best case scenario for Binghamton. Obviously, they would like to make the shot and win at the buzzer. But for them, Imani Watkins, you get the steal, you get the stop, and the ball lands in the hands of your best scorer. I mean, it doesn't add up any better than that for Binghamton. You don't always need offense to have a thriller. Just 24 combined points in the fourth. And we'll head to overtime here on ESPN3.
It's been a fun way to spend the early part of a Saturday afternoon. 40 minutes, not enough to decide a winner. 63-63 as we start overtime. She's Chelsea Lascauza. I'm Tim Hyman. Now that's Amani Watkins, whose bucket sent us into overtime. A kick to Boland. Rainbow shot won't go, and James could not handle. Touched a bulldog last. Boland from the right wing. Inside to James. Against Berkowitz, who still has four fouls. Leaner won't go, and Andrews has the rebound. Binghamton still looking to go inside here. And now, as you reset to overtime, about a five-minute uh, period here, you're kind of you're going back to that execution of your offense. It's not as as urgent as you would in that last 30 seconds, last minute. You got five more minutes to play. You know, now it's about stamina and who can execute down the stretch. Boland's second foul. Yale get the timeout back as we venture to overtime. So too the Bearcats. Roxy Barriman reaches 20 points for the first time in her career. She's two of two. So two timeouts left for Binghamton. And one for Allison Goots, Yale Bulldogs. Out of bounds, off Binghamton. So Barriman pressured the ball and forces the turnover. Those unforced turnovers creeping back in here for Binghamton. And for them, they have to maintain their composure. They're looking to get a defensive stop, and they have to take care of the ball when they have that possession. Berkowitz, Barriman a three ball, again. Two big threes from the sophomore. She's got all five for Yale in overtime, and Boland way offline. For Binghamton, you fought back, right? They were down five and a half, five and a half fought back. They're going to get overtime here, and to have a couple of unforced turnovers is a little deflating, and they're going to look to get it back here on the defensive end. Kirsch Navi tried to pounce. And they set up Andrews, who dribbles off her leg, and the Bearcats will scoop up possession. Rebecca Carmody has a big buckets in regulation. Binghamton looking to execute here. Last couple of possessions, empty possessions. Two turnovers in their first two possessions here in overtime. James against Berkowitz. Berkowitz will get called for the foul, and her day will come to an end. Was going for the strip, but instead will head for the bench. And now a chance for Alyssa James to make amends at the free throw line. Well, for the Bearcats, they erased that late deficit, Chelsea. But they will look back on how this game finishes at already nine missed free throws. You know, that is such a big part of the game. You talk about layups and free throws. You have to make the free shots. You have to score while the clock is stopped. And for Binghamton, like I said earlier, no matter how this game finishes, that's what they're going to be looking at. Kirsch Nabi got caught in the jam on the rebound attempt. But at last touch to Bulldog, Binghamton will pick up possession. 
And right now, Linda Simino swapping in Cena for every offensive possession and getting her out for every defensive possession. Cena on the floor. Carmody a three. Not the shot the Bearcats were hoping for. Carmody just her fifth attempt of the season from behind the arc. Four point, yeah, Lee. And a steal. Watkins. She makes it a two point game. Binghamton defense again leading to some quick buckets. You make it a two point game here. That's 22 for Watkins. 14 coming since halftime. Watkins now moves into sole possession of 28th place all time America East scoring. Barman can't get it to go. But Santucci comes out with it. So here we are again. Yale looking to protect a late two point edge. Moon called for the reach in. Binghamton hoping for a jump ball on that. The third for Moon. And that's the fifth foul since the start of the fourth quarter for Binghamton. That puts Yale into the bonus. Andrews for a pair of free throw attempts. She's down two of three from the line. So Andrews, the freshman, hits two big free throws. Stretches the lead back to four. Back inside to James without Berkowitz there. Offensive board, Carmody kicks it to Watkins with a new clock to work with. Long three, got it. Big shot from Monty Watkins that we've seen so many times this season and over her career. Tipped by Moon, recovered by Barriman. In the lane, no, rebound Moon. One point lead for Yale. 70 seconds to play in the first overtime. Watkins with Barman waiting at the top of the key. Watkins under pressure. Rebound Gorman. Watkins again from behind and a reach and foul against the Bearcats senior. Watkins held back to her feet after collecting her second foul. Now, you know, in the bonus, Binghamton putting Yale at the line. When you're Yale, you have to make your free throws here at the end of the game. You gotta put them in. Still would only be a one possession game, but then you make Binghamton make the tough shot. Santucci has not exactly been familiar with the line this season. One of three before today's game, but now two of two. Missed it. Rebound, Yale. Yeah. That was Gorman. 45 seconds to play. Yale yeah, leads by two. And that's just a huge, huge offensive rebound for Yale. And, you know. Mon takes a tumble and traveled. So the Bearcats catch a break. And they want a timeout. And they're going to advance the ball here, coming to our side of the court to try to execute. I mean, they have the opportunity to wind the shot clock down with only 2.7 second differential. It's a new wrinkle this year. You can pick what side you want to be on. And Linda Simino emphatically pointing to the near side of the floor. And we'll see what they draw up, trailing by two in what has been a pretty stellar back and forth affair. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for some high intensity afternoon basketball, you came to the right place. <laughs> Again, the Bearcats in action on Wednesday, rather Thursday, to take on Bryant on the road. 
And then they are back home. And a game that you can catch right here on ESPN 3 coming up on Sunday. That's on December 10th. NJIT rolls into town. Now let's see if Binghamton is able to execute here. If we take a little flashback to earlier in the end of the fourth quarter, Binghamton had a lot longer time to execute and draw up a play in their timeout because of the official review. Carmody for Cena against Andrews. Can't get the roll this time. Mon pulls down the rebound and uses Yale's timeout. timeout. Binghamton got the roll in the fourth quarter. They could not get the roll here in overtime. You know, now you're forcing them. They're going to have to foul if they don't get a steal off of here right away. I don't know how much time Coach Simino is going to want to wind off the clock here. Yale, I imagine, will uh, advance the ball into the front court here. And uh, Binghamton, they had a couple of different chances, and now they have to get one more stop. So it's quite the effort from the Yale Bulldogs. A depleted roster missing their big threat from deep, their big threat on the score sheet, and now they're 25 seconds away from what could be another big road win. And playing most of overtime without their second leading scorer, Jen Berkowitz, who is on the bench with five fouls. All hands on deck for Yale. Both teams in the bonus. That's Santucci. Prepared to inbound for the Bulldogs. Barrowman back to Santucci. The shot clock is off. Now pushes to Gorman. And now the Bearcats have to foul. Carmody's second will put Gorman at the free throw line. Cena and Bolin, two sharpshooters from deep, prepared to check in for Binghamton. There are not many choices at Allison Goot's disposal. She's got to let this one ride, and Gorman, it's a big free throw. Binghamton still with one timeout left here. If they get the rebound or possession again, they're able to advance the ball for a last run up play. This to make it a two possession game. And Gorman hits. Two of two. Timeout. Bearcats at the four point Yale lead. So now for Binghamton, the goal would be a quick bucket. Yeah, they want to score quickly. Uh, whether it's a two or a three, you want to keep it a one possession game. Right now at the four point, Binghamton, Yale, both out of timeouts, so they're going to have to really coach a few possessions in advance here. If you're no more timeouts, you know, you're going to give them the rundown. If we score here, we're doing this. If we miss it, we're doing this. Defensively, this is what we have to do. So this is where you have to trust that experience, the decision making, the practice end of game situations to trust your players to be able to play another two to three possessions without you in their ear. How did we get here? Well, we got here because the Bearcats erased a six point deficit in the final two minutes of regulation. And again, Binghamton chasing points 